Hey guys, it's Austin from Jones Bros Garage, and today I'm here to talk about this 2022 Husqvarna 701 SM. This is actually my new bike that I recently purchased, and I sold my Panigale V2 to be able to buy this. So today I just wanted to talk about five reasons why I sold my Panigale V2 for this bike, and um, basically why I don't regret it. Okay guys, so the first reason why I sold my Panigale to buy this Supermoto is because of comfort and ergonomics. If you follow any YouTubers over time, a lot of them, they progress through the sport bikes and then eventually they end up on a Supermoto. And I was kind of in the same boat, I guess. I could see why people do that. My wife started riding and she doesn't really like to ride fast, which kind of sucks on a sport bike. Like riding around through town and riding at slower speeds, it's not fun and it's not enjoyable at all on a sport bike. Mainly because of the ergonomics. You're hunched over reaching to the bars, your feet are behind you. So I really wanted a bike where I could sit upright and be comfortable, but I could also have fun at slower speeds and yet I didn't want to lose that sportiness that a sport bike has. So of course I could have gone to a naked bike like an MT-09, but I really just wanted to try something new. Long story short, the first reason I bought this bike is the comfort and ergonomics. The one thing with the Panigale is it ran very hot. You're not going to have that issue with every sport bike, but the Panigales in particular, they're known for being very hot because the exhaust is routed right under the seat. So riding at low speeds was even worse. And I just, I have other bikes in my garage and I didn't find myself ever wanting to take the Panigale out anymore. Yes, it looked beautiful and I liked seeing it in my garage, but so does this. This bike is stunning. But basically on this bike, you sit upright, like I'm completely sat upright my feet aren't behind me like a sport bike would be. And I really like how you sit high. This bike obviously being a supermoto, the seat height is higher. And yes, I am a shorter rider, but it's not that big of a deal on this bike. I could, I could get on it, I could touch one side down and everything works out, especially because the bike is so light, which is another thing that I really loved about the ergonomics of this bike. Not only do you sit upright, you could see over traffic, but the bike is also extremely lightweight. It's easy to maneuver around parking lots, especially as a shorter rider, when I back out of a parking spot, I can't just put my feet down and walk the bike back. I have to actually like hold the bars and stand beside the bike to walk it back, if that makes sense. And it's like that with every bike, every big bike, any, real super sport motorcycle, I have to do that because I'm not going to be able to touch my feet flat on the ground. Well, it's a lot easier when you have a bike like this that's over a hundred pounds lighter than any super sport would be. So the second reason I went from riding a sport bike to riding a super moto is maintenance and working on the bike. Working on my bikes is something I enjoy. I feel like when you work on your own bike, you kind of build an attachment and a bond to that bike. So when you own a sport bike and you're taking it to the shop for all of the work to be done on it, you don't really feel like a strong connection with that bike. And obviously, yes, a lot of people can work on their own sport bikes, but in my case, it was a Ducati. I didn't really want to worry about voiding the warranty or anything and it's just generally a lot harder to work on than a bike like this. A bike like this you could just easily see the motor without taking off fairings 
basically everything on it is easy. It's easy to change the oil. When I eventually, I'm gonna be buying a bunch of modifications for this bike, which kind of goes along with this. It's easy to switch the exhaust and everything is also cheaper. The parts, if you break anything, they're cheaper. I could actually afford to drop this bike. Obviously, I don't want to drop this bike, but if something happened and I accidentally dropped the bike, it's no big deal. I could buy the parts, fix them, and it'll be pretty cheap. The Ducati or most sport bikes would be an absolute nightmare if you drop them. Uh, they're generally a little bit more fragile. Not, not necessarily, like if you drop this bike, stuff is still gonna break, but it is generally a little bit tougher than a sport bike. And the parts definitely are way cheaper. Parts for a supermoto are pretty much always going to be cheaper than a sport bike. But when you look at something like a Ducati, the bike I had, I wanted to get an exhaust for it, but I would look at the exhaust and it was like $4,000. And then I would think, eh, that's not really worth it. The bike is fine how it is. But with this bike, I look at parts and I already have a list that's worth more than the bike. You know, I see you can get a good exhaust for 500 and I want to get that. I want to get the bike tuned. I want to get the air intake. Basically, I just wanted a bike that I could work on myself and make my own. And a Supermoto is a lot better of a platform for that than a sport bike would be. So the third reason I decided to abandon the sport bike life and take up a Supermoto is just the general handling of the bike. It's a lot lighter and it has a lot more manageable of a power band than a sport bike. I easily feel like I'm faster on this bike than I was on my Panigale. My first day riding this bike, I was just in utter shock of how capable it really is. I know my WR250R, I felt like I was able to push pretty hard, you know. It was on knobbies, but I could imagine if I would have had it on proper street tires like this, then it would have handled pretty well, but it was nothing compared to this bike. The power of this bike is just shocking. It's, it's so ridiculous to be sitting on like a dirt bike style bike and you hit 95 so easily and it's so easy to corner. Not only does this bike handle really, really well going fast, but it handles bumps in the road. I live in Pennsylvania, so we have a lot of rough roads, a lot of potholes, a lot of gravel. This bike is a lot better for those situations than a sport bike. Uh, not only does it have the longer travel suspension, but it's just a tad softer. It still is sharp and precise, and it has fully adjustable suspension, so you could stiffen it up for track days. But for general street riding, it's a little bit softer. It handles bumps a lot better. It handles gravel a lot better. This bike still has traction control, and it still has ABS, and you could disable both of those, but it does come with them. So it, it generally, it just handles so amazing, and I really prefer the handling of a bike like this right now over a sport bike. Because yes, a sport bike, a, a sport bike is fun for, you know, doing high speed highway pulls, but when you get on tight, small back roads, this bike just blows it out of the water, honestly. I could see, it would be hard to keep up with a bike like this on a, on a real tight, twisty back road if you were on a sport bike, for sure. Just because of the lightness and the way it delivers its power. So not only do I prefer the handling for those things, I also prefer the handling for the wheelies. Part of the reason, I was generally afraid to wheelie my Ducati because I didn't want to drop it and break anything. And also because it just had huge amounts of power being that it was a super sport motorcycle. A super moto is really a great way to learn how to wheelie, which is currently what I'm working on because I want to be able to ride out long wheelies. This bike is great for that. Even just after riding it a few times and trying to pick the wheel up, it's so light so it picks the wheel up very easily. And it's just so much easier than a sport bike. The upright seating position, and it just generally feels a lot more manageable trying to pick the wheel up. But that leads me into my fourth point, which is kind of a culmination of the first 
the first three points together. And it's that I want to get into track riding. We have some local tracks and we actually have a local supermoto track, which obviously being that it's a supermoto, it's designed to ride on that. The reason that this bike is so much better for the track for me is because it's a lot cheaper. Having a track day at the supermoto track costs a lot less than riding on the big track. And also just your general expenses. These tires are generally a lot cheaper than super sport bike tires. They are a little bit narrower and just all of the maintenance in general is pretty much cheaper than a super sport would be. So track days will end up being cheaper. I could also afford to drop the bike. One of the reasons I never wanted to take my super sport motorcycle to the track, being that it was a nice shiny new super sport, was obviously I didn't want to drop it and I didn't want to pay the bill to repair it if I did drop it. Whereas on this bike, I could stomach that. If I drop this bike, I mean, I might bend the bars, scratch up the exhaust, and I will be getting uh, axle sliders and some things like that to, to kind of help manage that. But basically, I've already had all these fairings off and I've only owned this bike a few weeks. The fairings are super easy to replace and super cheap. So dropping the bike is not a huge issue on the track. Another reason this bike is a better track bike for me, in my opinion, is that it's more suited to my skill level. Being that I don't have experience on track, it's not really the best idea to start out on a big super sport motorcycle. I feel like this bike is a lot more manageable, but I still could, I still am far from reaching its limits. I've seen videos of people riding these on the track and they could just be wicked. Um, they could be very hard for super sport motorcycles to keep up with. And I think that this is a lot more of a bike that I could take to the track and be comfortable on. And I could really get to know its limits and push myself. And that will be a lot easier than if I was on a super sport motorcycle that is just way above my skill level. So the final reason why I sold my Panigale and I bought this 701 Supermoto is because I want to try every different type of bike. If you followed my channel, you know that I've owned a Dual Sport, the WR250R. I had a Ninja 650, which is kind of like a sport touring style bike, I guess you could say. The Panigale V2. I own a Vulcan Voyager 1700 Bagger. I've pretty much and I've ridden tons of other bikes, you know, I've ridden beginner bikes, Japanese sport bikes, smaller cruisers. I've ridden a bunch of Grom. I've ridden a bunch of different style bikes, but I've never ridden a true supermoto before. And I really just wanted to try out the supermoto and see if I liked it. And so far, after just a couple weeks of owning this bike, I think that this might be my favorite bike that I've ever owned. So. If you're thinking about trying out a different style of bike, I say just go for it. If, if you're, you've been debating maybe selling your super sport motorcycle and picking up a super moto, just go ahead and do it. There's never been a time that I've regretted trying a different bike. And I think you really could improve as a rider just by trying out all of the different types of motorcycles that there are out there you never know what what you're going to end up liking i i used to make fun of cruisers and think that they were dumb and i never really understood why anybody would want to ride a cruiser when you could just get a naked sport bike and you're still pretty comfy but you have more power but now that i own a cruiser i understand where they're coming from so i really just i wanted to see what the supermoto life was about i loved my wr 250r i had fun riding that on the street However, that had knobby tires on it and it didn't have a lot of power and it didn't have great suspension. This basically took all of the things from the WR that I loved and it took all of, this, all of the things from super sport motorcycles that I loved and it put them together all in one. And it just makes such an excellent motorcycle. So guys, that was five reasons why I sold my super sport to buy a super moto. If you enjoyed the video, then Go ahead and give that subscribe button a little finger action and go ahead and like my video too while you're at it. 
If you own a supermoto, or maybe you have interest in buying a supermoto, or maybe you hate supermotos and you just love sport bikes, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. I do my best to answer all of my comments and I love hearing from you guys. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video.